Welcome back, everybody. We are here in our final round of the group stage, Group A, and we are going to dive right into the action. We'll go over pick bands next round, but map one is going to be on Subway. It is going to be Mayhem versus G-Men, and we're going to see what both of these teams are going to bring to this table. You know, I'm south again. Potato, yeah. where are you? Yeah. Right, right. Right. I'll be ready this time. Ooh. 35 caught me in... Last More usage of the flashlight from the G-Men side. They're using it to sort of distract the enemy as they come down the stairs so that they need to check that corner just to make sure that that's not a person holding that flashlight. I made it in. So, a very interest interesting psychological defense there. We've been on board Wookie making his advance with Theta all the way up through into this L on the second floor. And it's important to remember this is the basement objective. And we just saw G Men invest in everyone sitting in this basement floor. This time, they've put one up top. Nintendo is up there to watch for Wookiee and Theta making their moves, and it's a bit of a different setup than they had uh, in the previous series. I wonder if this is, is in an effort to sort of throw off maybe Mayhem watching any sort of play that they've uh, run here. I'm not sure that Mayhem has been studying the games they've You're played today, but they certainly right. understand the D-Man no, defense. Know you guys. I know you guys. And that they usually yeah. like to play in the tight, closed quarters. They don't usually send someone out as far as they did. So definitely a nice X-Factor play from G-Man there. Hey. Potato bot. Oh, the man catches out. Potato bot, but Nonner gets the refrag and they successfully take the tunnel platform. Watch that, dude. There's a, there's Theta a shuts line. down Brass to Mouth, trying to peek up from the basement stairwells on the back Watch end. That. Good bit of shooting there, and they still have to worry about Nintendo, who's up here on this floor in the train. He could peek and find an angle here through the windows onto Theta and Wookie if they make their move over to this side, but if they stay over there, it's going to be a little bit tougher for Nintendo to spot them. Us. Monitor finds Zach Fontaine at the end of the lower platform rails, and they've opened up a significant breach in the G-Man defense. James Bulk watching the rear, but Monitor Kid and James Bulk successfully take the tunnel platform, and Keisha and Tendo are basically a floor apart, and that might as well be a world apart as Theta finds Tendo as he tries to rotate down, and it's all down to Keisha. He's able to swing and gets both. Mono and James go down to shots from Keija. Now we're into a 1v2. We'll see if Keija can do it. real question is whether he catches Wookie coming down, because if he's looking down that stairwell the wrong way as Wookie comes out, he's mm. going to get caught from the side. It's going to come down to how well Mayhem can pinch Keisha right now. You know, they do need to hit both the stairwells at the same time, ideally. Actually, Wookie can push his stairwell and get all the way up to this corner before he really has to be a threat to the likes of Keisha. is using the darkened uh, columns to effectively stay hidden from anyone in that direction. So Wookie, I guess, is going to rotate back around and help Theta cross down that middle stair. They're running out of time with 45 seconds left on the clock. Not quite sure what Mayhem would be doing besides setting up for another push. And they're definitely taking their time. They're about to hear the 30-second beep. 
Here they go. Flashes getting botched by Theta. They don't go down and out the stairwell like they're hoping. Wookie now flashing his end. And Keisha's gonna hear these footsteps from Theta on the corner. He swings wide, finds one. Wookie tries to get the frag onto these shots onto Keisha here. But now Keisha's tucked into the to the bench. Finds the shots over Woo! the top and a very nice comeback from Keisha to hold things together for G-Men. And they snag their Volk round and go up 1-0. Solid defense from Keisha there, able to catch out Monar and Potato Bot in the, uh, not Potato Bot, Monar and James Bulk in the beginning push out of the tunnel there. And that evened it up essentially because once Mayhem had only two members left on the second floor, they had to cross down those uh, center stairways, and that's essentially a one-on-one -on -one situation almost every time. Even if they did it, you know, at the same time, they'd still have to fight Keisha one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah, not a easy battle, <laughs> to say the least. Keisha very good, uh, excels in those close quarters. Uh, and you can see him doing well there to snag a couple of kills and get G-Men... They were W, 4-0 for him there on the KD. Theta and Mana with two apiece and ultimately couldn't lock in that final one. And the flashes, again, were, were not thrown well. If they Those flashes did not go out the stairwell like I think they wanted them to. And I think Theta actually even flashed himself at one point. So just a rough go of them getting out there and exiting, but solid job from Keisha. Yeah, I mean, that's what you need to do when you're the last man up. Just guard the objective, make sure they have to fight you in uh, basically situations where you have the advantage and Keija did. He put his back to the comms. He made sure he blended in with the mm -hmm. darker areas and wasn't sort of wide open and sitting out in some of the more usual spots that Mayhem knows where people are. I mean, you saw Wookiee at the end there hit one or two, three spots that he knew people usually are, but Keija wasn't there. One off to a interesting start. We'll see if this entire series shakes well, up to be you, that close. What a no, 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 it's fine. It's fine. Right, There's enough lighting down here. Oh, oh they reset. I should have waited to cut to this scene because uh, there have been a significant amount of bugs today. Teams are resetting rather often to make sure that they get all their kits and loadouts working properly, which is the right thing to be doing. Um, again, you don't want to... We, we saw the consequences of not doing that, and uh, it, it could potentially result in a map loss for your team if you don't have a gun shooting when you need it to. So really important for these teams to make sure everything's in order at the start of rounds and... We'll be sure to wait until that 15 seconds in the pre-round timer takes all the way through and we are actually in to the start of these rounds before <laughs> we get everyone too hyped up because uh, it's too it's too, it's we don't want to waste all your energy. You gotta stay awake for at least another two maps. And then the Challenger Cup final after that, so a lot of onwards still yet to come. I think we are finally getting into the action here, round two of map one. like a very strong push through the tunnels from G-Men. Seems to be the favorite uh, offense on this objective is just try and get some people to push through the tunnels, get as many kills as they can, and hopefully start picking out the defense once they survive the tunnel push. And if they don't, well, the offense is in a bit of a pickle. man set up with his shield, the key point of entry for the basement. Enemy here at the door. Oh, a good nade gets denied from the man. Another nade comes in, the man able to tuck in in time, and it's a bit of a trade over the top of the shield. James and Zach won a piece, and in the darkness, the man continues to move up. 
Well, Mayhem's doing the right thing. They got one or two members. They rotated their positions to make sure that they can cover the tunnel. If anyone does make it out, Monarchid is certainly pushing up close enough that if anyone does come out, he will be able to respond pretty effectively, especially point blank. So let's see how uh, G-Men push this. Oh, uh, Mono thinking they were a little bit closer. He's going to swing off of that flash and nearly kills himself there. Keisha taking shots but doesn't find him. And this shield is going to be a tough bit uh, to deal with here. And if Mono stays where he is, it's going to be a very big risk for nades to hit him. I like this prone move, but it seems to be well predicted by the man as the nade lands right on top of Mono getting that full kill. There's a flash to try and confirm anything. Too bad here, too bad. Alright, we got one. Quick swing there from Kiza around the shield. Very good drop back from him to snag two. And suddenly, Wookie's the only one alive. The accurate kill counts there for g -Man, and it's a 4v1. They are really looking to run away with this subway set. It's going to be a call order for Wookie to deal with. A good flash, actually, though, comes out. Should blind all three of them. Able to swing, finds zero as there's too many targets to choose from. G men get the kill and go up to zero. Effective push out of the tunnels essentially eliminated a good portion of mayhem there. They they didn't seem to be able to recover. Uh, they kept trying to take that corner and losing men to it. A heavy investment trying to get out there and yeah, it uh, worth it for May for for G men to push from the tunnel, but mayhem just yeah they kept getting picked up trying to defend. And they don't really need to, you know, you can let the team push out there. Uh, you know, like we're saying, uh, the objective's not, you know, the objective's farther away. You have to go down that tunnel. There's different angles to hold. Uh, and it, se it just seems that both of these squads are pretty uh, capable of pushing out of that tunnel and being a threat. Our next objective going to be upstairs, just a single floor, and we saw G-Men cap on this uh, last round. I wonder if Mayhem are thinking of trying to set up for a cap here to even the odds. Would be the ideal play, even up the points, try and get the momentum back on your side. This is the most capable objective, as I said before. I mean, you can easily get a man in if you wipe out even a third of the defense usually you got to spread out if you're on the defensive side so you're going to have people pretty far away from the objective so once that sneak capper gets in it's really hard to get back to it Sure, we actually hop into this round as the pre round countdown timer finalizes and we dive into round number three. It's like a pretty standard defensive setup, too, in the I guess double stairwell that yeah, overpasses uh, to the second floor, the man in the train car, and Zach Fontaine sitting right next to the overpass in the in the rails, making sure that if the tunnel gets penetrated, he can get the refrag quite easily. Uh, doesn't look like they're watching too far onto the north flank, so I think Mayhem could take advantage of that, but they don't seem to be sending anyone north. Here. Yep. Yeah. 
small advance coming in from the basement, going to be ex eventually exiting out the stairs and challenging the likes of the man and Nintendo who are set up and waiting for this offensive push here on the second floor. They got Keisha and Brass in auxiliary positions holding the upper catwalk, which is not getting pushed, and Zach beneath them. And so, curious to see when the Mayhem offense is going to be setting up to push, because it's definitely going to be a bit before they do. Here's my you may push all the way down or take sure. Very slow offensive push. They've used almost half the time before the first shots come out, and the man catches Theta as he crosses out of the south entrance way. Flash comes out over the top from Mono. Nintendo able to snag James the Nade somehow getting Nintendo down to there though the push coming in. TTV finds one on the stairwell. Brass goes down, even the odds just a bit. It's now 3 3 with G Men. The Reds available, and Nintendo's honestly in a spot where he can. Put out plenty of comms. He can radio in if anyone's pushing in from this basement stairwell. He still ultimately is holding a good defensive spot there for at least a few more minutes. There is actually only a minute 40 on the clock left. The wiki made it down the south stairs, and I don't think the man is even aware of that. Oh, and Wookie punishes the man by catching him from the rear. And where? Hold the mic longer. <laughs> <laughs> A little bit of interesting back and forth there in the team comms. He was releasing his uh, mic too soon and he was cutting out to the rest of his team. down to Keisha and Zach Fontaine and they don't have the best view on the objective potato bot could potentially sneak in and get the cap and that's where that's oh, confirmed from Nintendo. I mean, I mean Pedo. an important one because if they don't get him things like uh, caps can come in Zach swings finds one pushing in for the cap you talked about how potato could push in there Keisha still has a commanding angle to hold, and as long as he defends from these two pushing in, he's doing his job. Shots ringing in. He finds one over the top. Wookie goes down. Mono's pad out here. He's trying to push. The Nades coming in. He, even... he gets him on the backside. Wookie peeking out. G-Men just able to hang on there. Mayhem nearly snagging a cap under the nose of the G-Men defense. But... Uh... A solid hold from them, and they take this subway map up 3 0. Yeah, I mean, that's the importance of tucking yourself in as far behind that column as you can. There was definitely a little bit of Monarchid's back hanging out there, and he just found it. Very observant there from Keezer to snag that. A little, if Mono was just a little more tucked in or maybe even moved up around the other side of the column, he would have gotten the cap in, but hindsight's twenty twenty, and we definitely have a lot better view of the, of the action than they do. Yeah. We certainly do. A solid bit of uh, offense, too. I mean, the, I liked the way they moved in there. You know, they had a good plan. They definitely were thinking cap the way they sort of last second charged in to get onto that objective. It was a very good mayhem approach. They played it patiently. They waited till that last kind of moment to then make their move. And uh, 
ultimately couldn't quite string it all together. <laughs> they nearly did it, but Keija, the main threat of this of this G-Men team, shuts them down, and now G-Men have this nice 3-0 lead as we move into round four. Two tunnel, two tunnel, two tunnel. Auto pushing down. There's not two in the tunnel. There's a whole G-Men team. Four alive here in this basement, and they get the first kill. Now they can make their entry point up the stairs and be right on top of objective, and Mayhem have to be a bit concerned. Yeah, Mana ran into a whole swarm of them there and got eaten. Ooh, the nade gets danger close to Wookie. Wookie able to tuck back in. Keisha here onto the corner. Snags yeah, the, the kill, and Wookie goes down. Mayhem suddenly only left with three, but they have all eyes drawn into the right location as G Men continue to pile out of this stairwell. Two get picked up, and that's the dangers of being too close. The shield doesn't deny all of the bullets, and now it's just the man and Keisha with Nintendo slowly working his way. Oh, there's the res quickly dead. Nintendo slowly working his way in the south <laughs> he stood up and went right back down and that's that's the danger of being res in open fire and keija finds james bulk as he tries to get a peek in the tunnel is their bastion right now Tatobot's putting some fire down on the objective not seeing nintendo coming around the south stairs and he picks up Tatobot. Big kill all down. there. Big kill there. Now it's all up to Theta. It's a 1v3. Well, Theta finds the first. The shield's going to be tough to uproot, and they have Nintendo that can take shots from a different angle that I don't know if Theta's ready for. There they come. Shots are ringing out from Nintendo. Theta seems to be aware, and he's trying to suppress both. Does he have enough ammo to keep them suppressed for two and a half minutes, though? Because there's plenty of time on the clock for this G-Men team to work with. I think his main concern is just keeping them back away from the objective. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if the man could actually make it up there and get a sneak cap, but I oh, Nintendo yeah. finds Theta. <laughs> yeah, I was waiting for that. Yeah, they they don't need uh, <laughs> the cap there. They just need that kill over the top. G men find it with Nintendo. And a solid map one here on Mayhem, the team that is competing for this second spot to go into that semifinals. So I think with this G-Men have pretty much locked it in. Five kills, uh, excuse me, five map wins in a row. They are undefeated so far in this round robin stage. Where do we go for map two? Cause this was Mayhem's map pick. And I have all the bands up. Uh, oh no, I don't. Mayhem's ban was... Suburbia. G-Men been quarantined, so I mean, we're probably going to see Cargo uh, with, you know, any other map that plays sort of close range, because both teams really do favor the close range maps. I, I, If I had to bet on a longer range map, I'd say Mayhem probably have it. They definitely have the skill at the longer range fights more than the G-Men, but the G-Men have shown a propensity for getting in uh, the face of these teams that yeah. really like to play out. Yep. And <laughs> once once you get close enough, it's 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 a ga it's game over. Curious to see where we're headed for map number two. Uh, cargo still on the table here, and if G-Men are going to stay true to their roots, we are going to be heading to Cargo for map two. Uh, Subway, I think, was an odd pick there from Mayhem. I maybe would again would have gone bizarre. I wonder why no one went bizarre against G-Men. Um, Curious, curious map choice. I mean, Bizarre is always one of those, I don't want to say controversial ones, but you're either good at it or you're not good at it. And if sure. you think the other team's really good at it, you're not going to pick it. But when G-Men are so powerful on maps like Cargo and Subway and Suburbia, it's still a surprise to me to pick into that, <laughs> to that strength. Either way, uh, this isn't Mayhem picking. This is G-Men's map choice. They managed to just completely take Mayhem's map pick away from them. And now Mayhem are in a really tough spot. Uh, you know, they need these wins. They need any win they can get. They're going to get 
bumped down to a 3-3 scoreline, uh, they're going to be competing with not SEAL Team Bravo because they have lost four, so they're out. But they'll be competing with a uh, boss fight for that potential second place to move on to the semis. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting, uh, interesting play. And here we go into the first round of cargo. Well, let's give it some time. Are you going to take it out? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've seen the resets happen. Looks like everything's all kosher. So it does, and we're going to hop in to round number one of map two of our final series in the round robin group A. They might just run at it. Yeah, it's pretty much on the Yeah, I mean, they got nothing to lose at this point. They're just going to play whatever. Okay. It's fine if they don't have to play seriously. We've got a lot to lose, so fucking. Yeah. And, uh,. Neatly summarized mayhem there. <laughs> they're well aware of their situation, saying exactly what we just said. Okay. Yeah, they, they definitely lose a lot more if they lose. And I mean, I know that sounds like an obvious statement, but uh, G Men have been doing nothing but winning today, and they can definitely play loose and lose a few and still not take it too hard on the head. Oh, my God. Oh, and a team kill from Potato Bot on Monarchid. That's, that's a, a unforced error there. Yep, and that's a tough one to have to go off there because, I mean, G-Men are nowhere even close to being that far pushed up. Mayhem clearly a bit rattled by G-Men's uh, offensive style and how quick they've been playing Cargo and expecting a lot faster of a push from this G-Men team, which has still not come through after a couple of minutes. To feeler grenades, trying to see if anyone's in those center uh, boxes. A lot of utility going out early. <laughs> Bolt picks up Pendo as he tries to cross through the middle buildings. Theta knows where the man is oh, now. Good nade tosses. Almost two go into that window there. Some good shots over the top. Snag the man on a cross. Frass gonna look for the refrag to get the res. Zach and James find a kill a piece. Down goes Brass as he tries to re-peak an angle there. And now it's all up to Zach and Keija with Keija working his way into the diamond. Res is gonna go out on Theta, which is pretty crucial right now. Get that 3v2 action going on, but now it's going to be Potato Bot versus Keija. And there it is. G Men take the first round. Good way for G-Men to kick off map two. They continue to run away with this series, doing a really nice job to win themselves the early lead uh, with that Marsoc round. Uh, just going to show why they would pick into this map. You know, they they played it patiently there too. They didn't even get aggressive out the gate uh, and still did a good job to snag that round. Mayhem really on the back foot here. They need to stop this bleeding. They need to stop the damage that is getting done to their scoreline because they they have to get points on the board. If it comes down to a tie, the points are going to matter. Every point one is going to matter. And if they don't get any here, uh, it's going to be rough. So we'll see what Mayhem can do as we pop into round number two of map two of round three of the round robin group A. Quite a mouthful there. Early pickup for Keija. He's getting aggressive in the center. Smoke flashes, excuse me, coming out into that crate. Catch Theta and force him off of that forward position. And now Keija is attacking on defense. Finds one, but not before Theta can get those shots off into the back. Now Mayhem into a 4v3. James and Potato still back at spawn. Cages and Caesar. Two cross. 
Is that one Do you club left? Got one out Feeler back grenades back. go out. Don't quite go as far as they need to, though. Yeah. And the defense are definitely getting very aggressive here. Brass to mouth peeking around through the pipeline, trying to see where Potato Bot is. And a trade goes out between Tendo and Theta, and they're both down. The ban is going to get that res, though. It's a lot easier to scoop that up. Nintendo gets the quick confirm down on the Theta. Now James can't get the res, and Mayhem down to just the two of them. James and Potato Bot. We'll see what they can do up against a solid defense here, just missing Keija, who was playing aggressive. Gonna be a tough defense to poke into with only two members left up. Yeah. They're doing the right thing. They're rotating. And a trade between Potato Bot and the man goes out, and they're both lethal, so it's all down to James Bulk for three G Men. Pretty sure Brass heard that approach from James. Bit of banter there on the open comms. They clearly know James is here. Especially now as he makes some shots here trying to oh, shit, do a little do -si do with Brass and the rest of this defense. Nintendo and Zach looking for a little piece of this as they check their angles. Brass sets up for the trade. It pays off for G Man. They Snag another round. Six unanswered points here for them as they go up on map two, two zero. Yeah, that was a brutal, brutal defense there. And they just didn't let Mayhem get anywhere near the, the objective. Anytime they tried to poke in, they punished it viciously, especially when they were when they got the simultaneous downs there and they were able to get the res off, but Mayhem wasn't able to and the confirm yep. just solidified that defensive advantage. Yep. They, uh, Keija getting out there early as well, finding a couple of kills, definitely uh, put a wrench in their plans. And yeah, it's, uh, we'll see again. I mean, Mayhem really need a, need points. They can't keep letting this happen. They can't let G-Men run away with the momentum like they are. If it keeps happening, you know, Mayhem may be out of contention for those, uh, for those finals. Yeah, that's that would be very unfortunate for a team that worked as hard as they they yeah. have. No, big Thank, thanks for nothing, guys. Oh, look another jiggle peak. Center left. Center left. Jiggle peak. Center left. Center left. Center left. Center left. Frustration coming out from the Mayhem side. Certainly tough to deal with. We'll see if they can handle their defensive 
set up here. It is pretty solid, and they have that back objective behind the crate, so they don't need to challenge anything early. They can really let G-Men come to them. G-Men has to cross out that big open center point of the map there, and even if they're set up, it's challenging to work your way across that gap in the space unless you get a couple of kills. So if Mayhem stay tucked in and avoid these early picks that they've been letting up, maybe it'll work out for them. Two go down for one there. Although Mono should be able to rotate around and get that res, I don't think anyone has eyes on that particular angle. Nintendo throws a fantastic nade that gets the confirm, though. No res available. Mono caught in an awkward spot, able to duck back in, and Mayhem down to three. Yeah, G-Men are just catching are Mayhem as they rotate around, trying to sort of find angles, but peeking is what gets you <laughs> killed, and that's what's definitely the truth here. Liar. Adabot finds Keisha as he tries to move out of the tunnel entrance. It's all down to brass to mouth the man. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Maybe a disconnect on their end because that tooltip is not accurate. There is only two left here on the on the on the field. Yeah, I was curious about that myself. <laughs> I wasn't sure what I was seeing there. I'm like, where's that last third guy? Um, I guess there was a drop on the G-Men side. So more advantage to Mayhem. Brass gets caught out trying to exit the tunnel. Solid shots from Potato. And Mayhem may be able to snag a point here as G-Men are down to just one left alive in a 1v3. If the man can rotate, though, maybe he can get a couple of reses. Potato Bot does seem to have vision on that body. And the smart thing to do if... Oh, well, not anymore. He still has Brass he can get. It doesn't seem to be going for the res, though. Oh, well, Brass is inside the mm -hmm. uh, tunnel entrance, so he does have to get inside the tunnel. A minute 30 left on the clock, and Cargo is a small map, and Brass what? finds Potato Bot after the res. Oh, shit. Oh, it's just you and me. Big pick up yeah. there. It brings things so back I'm into a 2-2. One minute. Here comes the split. A good solid push on both ends. Brass on one side, the man on the other. Brass is here, finds his kill. Wookie now all on his own, can't get the man, and the split works off very well for G-Men. They go up 3-0. Yeah, solid aggressive push there at the end with just two members. Brass to Mouth was able to evade vision from Monar and Wookie as he moved through the center there. Yeah. It's important to hold your lines, hold your angle, and make sure that if anyone does cross, you know, you you communicate that in an acceptable manner. I will say perhaps maybe Wookie talking a little bit near the end probably drew attention to where he was, but here we are on the round four. Yeah, it is uh, a tough pill to swallow up your mayhem right now. Again, it's not quite over. They still have another round left, but they have taken no time between rounds. They want to get right back into the action here. Uh, Mayhem readies up, and we are underway into round number four. What? Want me to hold it? Yeah. No. No one made it barrel, did they? Oh, a solid grenade from Zach Fontaine. Finds Wookie in the center there. 
res could come out. I believe that was supposed to be a confirmation grenade, but it just didn't go far enough. And Mayhem's back to full strength. That confirmation was danger close. Could have been an air burst right on top of him, but fortunate enough it isn't. And Mayhem, get the res, stay five alive. Still in this here in what could be the final round. We'll see what Potato Bot can do with the LMG. Moved up into a pretty nice position where he can really pump some rounds down range. There's one in red crate on objective. Minus one. Solid hit from Tatobot playing Zach Fontaine on the rotation. Oh, Keej is over there, a little peeking. Good call outs from G Men identifying where the locations of these aggressors are. Mayhem finally getting the round they need. Two kills now picked up here. As the revive does come in, turns it into one. They're doing a smart thing here. They're not getting in G-Men's face, because that is not the way you fight G-Men. You fight them from angles, you make sure you punish them for just trying to move in their own space. And that's what Potato Bot was doing until he got found out by Keija. And the trade between the man and Monarchid. Can't even go Lots of feeler grenades, but none of them connecting where they should. Oh, and Brass finds James Bulk after a little dance around the center of the buildings. Nada gets the refrag. Wookie tries to follow up on Tendo, but doesn't quite get there. Trade there. That's going to work for Mayhem. Wookie can get that res. Wookie's actually going to look for the confirm, though. Nintendo is going to get his, and we're into the 1v1. Actually, Nintendo doesn't confirm Theta there. Wookie can still res him. Well, that might be by design, but I, I doubt it. I think Nintendo thought he got the confirm. But it does benefit Tendo to a certain degree. If Wookie does try and go for the res, he exposes himself to where they, or Tendo used to be. But Tendo rotates back and yeah. the res goes out. One V two. Theta looking to challenge through the center with a minute left. Nintendo has to hold on here if he wants to snag this map. The Mayhem's ideal finish would be a cap, especially since there's only one left, but Theta goes down to Tendo and it's all down to Wookie to find this last defender. He's got 30 seconds left. He definitely doesn't have enough time to crash the objective yeah. and get it happen. So this is kills or nothing. And this is really Nintendo just has to tuck it in here. Sit back and defend the objective. He knows no one can push in from the front, and that is seemingly what he's doing. He's tucking himself in, and with 13 seconds left, Wookiee's here on objective. He's looking for the kill on a Nintendo. Gets a quick reload and a bit of back and forth. Nintendo swings wide. Oh, Wookiee. Can't get the kill and a completely undefeated session here for G-Men against Mayhem. They secure all eight rounds in a row and take two maps from the clutches of Mayhem in round robin group A. Now, I don't know exactly where everyone lands on the standings wise. If you look at what I got here. I think it's boss fight G-Men. From what from what the standings say, that seems to be that the the result of round rob of the group A stage. They'll be moving on to the semis. 
Uh, of course, I'm not the final say here. You'll have to check the Challenger Cup bracket to really know who uh, the finalists are there that are going to be moving on to our semis. But either way, it has been fantastic games to tune into today. Am I right, Snooper? Yeah, I mean, these have been some excellent games. Solid plays from both teams. Nothing too usual, even. Yeah. Uh, you, I mean, when you get to the top tier, you start seeing the similar meta, same plays. And sure, there's been initial stages of that. But then once it starts, mm. you know, once the action starts going, <laughs> it completely shakes it up. It really does. Uh, we saw a ton of new spots today. Yeah, a ton of really unusual stuff from teams, yeah. especially on Downfall, Subway. I mean, stuff that we don't usually yep. see from top tier teams. I don't know if they're trying stuff out today or whether this is all practice, but this is something we just don't usually see in cast. I mean, hey, we've talked about it in the pre-show. There's a lot on the line, over 15,000 in prizing and ca and cash to be earned there. There's, there's plenty to compete for, you know, and uh, it's been exciting to watch these teams bring in new strategies that they are likely saving for this exact moment it gets me hyped up about tomorrow and it gets me even more hyped up for when we're gonna see the challenger cup in just a few hours and then obviously next weekend when we get to the semis and finals great onward coming at you across the board this whole week and again tune in in about two hours time we'll be back i'll actually be on vr master league uh the twitch.tv slash vr master league where we'll be broadcasting the challenger cup uh finals alg versus animal house that'll be pretty exciting to watch so you're gonna want to tune into that but until then, we are going to rest our weary souls. It has been a long afternoon of Onward Spectating. We appreciate all of you tuning in. Uh, we really do. I know it's, uh, like we said, it is a pretty long day sometimes and a lot of games getting played out. Also, a big shout out to all of our sponsors. You've seen a couple of ads cross up on your screen here, but Pro2 VR, VR Cover, B Haptics, HyperX, Rebuff Reality, Cyber Shoes, Arma, VRWare, Asterion, and Fixed all coming together to offer that high uh, high tier prizing pool that we have. And obviously a quick shout out to the Cloud2 HyperX headset, wireless headset that I've been using for audio and the mic that you've been hearing today, the Quadcaster with RGB coloring, very uh, nice piece of equipment on both ends. I really enjoy the headphones and I really do like the mic. It's uh, It sounds You've been listening to it all day, so you know how it sounds. <laughs> uh, but with that, we will be signing off. Again, thank you so much for tuning in. Come back in just a few hours over on the VR Master League where we will be watching the Challenger Cup. But until then, we'll see you all later.